When you think of microcurrent, if you've ever heard of it before, you might immediately think of a microcurrent facial. Ah, don't we all? So usually a microcurrent facial uses weak electrical signals to stimulate the muscles and skin. Some claim that this can reverse the visible signs of aging, such as drooping skin and dullness. Of course, the effects are not nearly as dramatic as surgical procedures like a facelift. And unlike invasive procedures, microcurrent facials involve no incisions, no anesthesia, no recovery time. So you might be wondering why I would let anyone send electrical currents to like the eyeballs or skin around the eyeballs. It sounds painful, right? Well, this is a do not try this at home moment, but we've actually started to see some interesting results in the ocular field. So let's talk about if there are any implications of microcurrent for dry eye disease, since this is a dry eye and eye channel. So welcome back to eye school. I'm Dr. D. I'm here to teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. I also try to bring you what's new in the eye care world. And so sometimes they're not totally vetted treatments. Like today, microcurrent is kind of off course for dry eye. If you love to hear what's new in dry eye management, make sure to subscribe down below because I post every week. So what is microcurrent? Well, I had never heard of it before, but it is a device, microcurrent, to send weak electrical signals into the body. These devices apply extremely small microamp electrical currents to the tissues using electrodes that are placed on the skin. Now they work by delivering an electrical current to muscles and skin cells. The idea behind this is that the electrical current will build up muscles in the face, lifting and tightening the skin. Some companies also claim that microcurrent facials stimulate collagen production. At present, there are no studies though that confirm this. But there are anecdotal reports, and we know kind of how those go, that suggest people can notice an immediate difference after sessions. Now, doctors actually sometimes use microcurrents and have done so for decades to treat things like Bell's palsy, a type of facial paralysis. And you can actually purchase microcurrent devices to use at home, or you can receive professional treatments with a dermatologist typically or an esthetician. So does it really work? Well, research suggests that microcurrent stimulation does potentially have several benefits like wound healing, reducing inflammation, improving circulation and muscle function. So let's get into the research and I'm going to preface what I'm about to say because limited scientific research suggests that microcurrent treatments may stimulate the facial muscles. By stimulating the facial muscles, we may help the face look tighter and reduce those visible signs of aging. It may also improve blood circulation. So the idea is that it can improve blood flow to the skin and improving the health of the skin cells, making the skin look healthier or increasing plumpness. As much as we've talked about telangiectasia on this channel though, if we're increasing that blood flow, are we really helping dry eye? We'll talk about it. There's also some evidence that it may help promote wound healing by increasing that blood circulation and reducing inflammation, helping with chronic wounds and ulcers. And it may also help with certain types of acne. Other health benefits, microcurrent stimulation may also offer other non-cosmetic benefits. So there was a 2019 study that found that daily self-administered microcurrent therapies could reduce facial pain from sinus congestion for up to six hours. It also reduced pain and congestion over four weeks of use. There's been animal research that suggests that electrical stimulation may help improve the functioning of atrophied muscles, but more research in humans is necessary to determine if that's a viable treatment for muscle weakness or muscle loss. Now, are there any contraindications for microcurrent? Yes, absolutely. So there are some specific things you want to avoid. Epilepsy, pregnancy, heart conditions, pacemakers, metal plates or pins, excessive fillings or bridge work in the mouth, thrombosis, diabetes, recent Botox or fillers, you should wait at least two weeks, or any condition that reduces sensation of the face. The recent use of retinol, Roaccutane or acids, and all jewelry does need to be removed before the treatment because of being made of metal. So what's the difference between like a professional microcurrent and an at-home device? Well, professional tends to be more powerful, of course. We're used to seeing that even in IPL devices. We would not want you using a professional one at home, but they might produce more results when used by an experienced clinician. Dermatologists and estheticians will often combine them with other 
treatments like a face mask, serums, massages, and then that can be tailored to your particular needs depending on what your desired results are. If you're using an at-home device, you would have to use that really consistently to get the results you want. It also might take longer to achieve those results because the currents are weaker. So are these safe types of treatments? Is a microcurrent facial treatment safe? Well, in 2021, there was a study that showed that they are relatively safe, I guess. When they're used correctly and when you correct for the things you're not supposed to use them for, so not using them in folks with lots of cavities and pacemakers and things, yes, they can be safe. But you do wanna avoid if epilepsy, heart conditions, implanted medical devices, and things like that. We also recommend against treating pregnant people because we don't know if it's safe yet for a developing fetus. Another potential risk for microcurrent comes from unregulated or untested microcurrent devices. And that's the thing, there's so many on the market that it can be hard to suss out which ones are tested and vetted versus which ones are not approved by the FDA, you know, maybe not even approved by anybody, not even medical grade or helpful in any way. So what would be the side effects of a microcurrent facial? There's again, like limited research on this, on the potential side effects, but it's possible that you would feel like tingling, discomfort, skin irritation, sensitivity of your skin. You could have dryness, drowsiness, dizziness, even facial twitching, depending on how your muscles react. So a person should consult a doctor if you have side effects after getting a microcurrent facial. So could you do microcurrent on the eyelids? Well, actually, there are folks out there that advertise microcurrent eye lifts. It's a non-invasive method. It can lift sagging skin on the upper eyelids. Is that safe? It probably depends greatly upon the device. Is it safe around the eyes? So yes, probably. It's designed to people to help people with retinal disease actually. So certain devices, and I think that's really the crux of this, is getting a medical degree device, getting an FDA approved device, getting a device that has been looked at around the eyes. But we've actually seen microcurrent being tested for retinal diseases. So probably if you're going to use microcurrent in a facial, you would have to commit to regular treatments for as much as a year because it can really take a long time to see healing results that muscle toning, those changes. Even though you might see the benefits sooner, it probably would go away before staying. So you probably have to commit to microcurrent longer term. There have been a number of research studies that have suggested that daily use of microcurrent stimulation helps promote retinal as well as optic nerve health in three different ways. So here are the ways that MCS or microcurrent stimulation can promote eye health. One function of microcurrent stimulation therapy is to restore cell health health, enabling normal function, proper healing and repair. Increasing the blood supply to the area can um, stimulate the cells and tissues being nourished and refreshed. It can re-stimulate and energize dormant retinal cells. So the theory is that cells are like batteries. When they're lo running low in energy, they become sluggish and dormant. And so microcurrent theoretically can boost the cell's ability to rid themselves of waste products that interfere with the flow of energy, nutrients, and communication within the cells. I always talk about like macular degeneration being a rusting, you know, it's that oxidative stress that causes issues. And so the idea is that we're stimulating these cells to get rid of their own oxidative stress. And another study, microcurrent with targeted supplements improved visual acuity on the eye chart after six months. That was published in the Russian Journal of Ophthalmology. But it should be noted that some studies are small. In fact, most of these studies are small and don't even have any controls to compare to. Even so, a 2021 review of 10 studies reported promising therapeutic effects on retinitis pigmentosa and optic neuropathy and suggested that further research could further pinpoint treatment applications for patients with AMD, retinal artery occlusion, and glaucoma, so back of the eye diseases, not necessarily front of the eye. Other studies looked at the potential treatment for Stargardt's disease and retinitis pigmentosa and also felt like it was important potentially for optic nerve degeneration generation as well. So let's talk for a moment about long COVID. Another potential use for microcurrent stimulation is treating vision abnormalities associated with long COVID. There's one study that showed this to be the case. I'll link it below. It may also have applications in normalizing circulation.
circadian patterns because the disruption in circadian rhythm impacts vision and aging. But does it work for dry eye? So if you remember, we talked a little bit about microcurrent, maybe helping with blood flow, maybe helping the cells themselves work better. And so it'll be interesting to see if microcurrent has any implications in dry eye. The other thing that would be interesting is if we could stimulate that trigeminal nerve. We've talked about neurostimulation before, and typically we're neurostimulating by getting at that trigeminal nerve that is in the nose. And so the old devices that went up the nose to neurostimulate, the eye tier 100 that I've made videos about that stimulates the trigeminal nerve on the side, and then medications like Tiervaya that are not inhaled, but just have to hit the nasal mucosa to stimulate nerves to make more tears. And so can we use microcurrent for dry eye? Not sure. If you've been using microcurrent, whether it's at home or in your facials with your esthetician, I definitely want to hear from you down below. Let me know if you think that microcurrent has had any effect whatsoever on your dry eye. I do have a microcurrent device in the office. It's not a treatment that we have patients pay for or anything like that. It's something that we use in our aesthetic side of the business and that we have been experimenting with with dry eye, kind of letting patients use it to see. And I've had some, again, anecdotal evidence that patients feel like it does help their dry eye, but that is far, far away from being an actual vetted study with controls. And so again, I just love to hear your information down below, always learning new things, taking these aesthetic treatments and seeing, is there an implication for treating these long-term low-grade inflammatory chronic conditions like dry eye? So again, leave it down below. I'd love to hear from you guys and let me know if there's any other treatments on the horizon that you're having done that you want me to, to vet out and see if there are any dry eye uses for it. That is going to be it for today's eye school. I thank you for joining me. Make sure to subscribe if you like my videos. I make them every week and I'll see you next time.